The region D above can be described in two ways. Number one, if we visualize the region having top and bottom boundaries, express each as a function of x, and provide the interval of x values that covers the entire region. So notice how the top boundary of the region D would be this horizontal line here, which has an equation y equals three, and the bottom boundary would be this line here passing through the origin. Let's work on determining the equation of this line here. We'll notice how it passes through the origin, which would be the ordered pair zero comma zero. It also passes through this point here, which has the ordered pair five comma three. So notice how this line has a y-intercept of zero, and using these two points, notice how the slope would be up three, right five, and therefore the slope is three-fifths. So the equation of this line would be y equals three-fifths x. Which means the top boundary, g sub two of x, would be y equals three. And because g of x equals y, we can say that g sub two of x equals three. Next, the lower boundary is a line y equals three-fifths x, which means our function g sub one of x would be g sub one of x equals three-fifths x. The interval of x values that cover this region, notice how it would be x equals zero here, all the way out to this point here where x equals five, and therefore, the interval of x values that cover this region would be the closed interval from zero to five. Now let's take a look at number two where we define this region using left and right boundaries. If we visualize the region having right and left boundaries, express each as a function of y and provide the interval of y values that cover the entire region. So notice how the right boundary would be this line which we know has equation of y equals three-fifths x, and the left boundary would be this vertical line, x equals zero. But notice how we do need to express these as functions of y, not as functions of x. So for the right boundary, we know it is y equals three-fifths x, but to express this as a function of y, we need to solve this for x. To do this, we would multiply both sides by five-thirds. We would have five-thirds y equals x, which means our function f sub two of y would be five-thirds y. Next, the left boundary we already know is x equals zero, because f of y equals x. We can say f sub one of y equals zero. And then finally, the interval of y values that cover this region, well, notice how this low point here has a y value of zero, all the way up to this horizontal line, which is y equals three. And therefore, the interval of y values that cover this region would be the closed interval from zero to three, again, for y values. Being able to define regions in the xy plane using both of these methods will be important when we start setting up double integrals when determining the limits of integration. If we integrate with respect to x first and then y, we would use the method we used in number two. If we integrate with respect to y first and then x, we would use the method we used in number one. I hope you found this helpful.